there, ladies and gentlemen, um, a resounding call to action uh, to add to those calls from earlier. We're now going to move, we'll have um, more panel debates. Uh, we're going to talk later about trade and TTIP, that's been mentioned several times. We're going to come at the end of the day to the EU investment plan. But first we're going to focus on an issue that has been mentioned time and time again this morning as we move to a panel debate on energy and industry. As we heard from the European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker earlier, and again there from Martin Schulz, the proposed energy union, proposed by the Commission but endorsed by the EU summit last week, has been described by some people as one of the most ambitious EU projects ever, as ambitious as the coal and steel community or the internal market. Key question, will this attempt to create what would effectively be a fifth freedom, the free flow of energy, be enough to ensure Europe has a resilient, reliable and secure system that delivers the energy we need at affordable prices and then, coming back to the title of our session today, the whole event, will it help to make Europe more competitive and therefore more attractive to investors? Let me bring our panel up. I am delighted to welcome, please do come on the stage as I introduce you, delighted to welcome Dominique Christori, who is Director General for Energy in the European Commission. Come and sit next to me, uh, Dominique. Jerzy Buzek, Chair of the European Parliament's Industry, Research and Energy Committee. Very warm welcome, sir. Lovely to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Torkel Renman, CEO of Loist, uh, which is a Belgian manufacturer of lime and other chemicals. Uh, very warm welcome to you there, you're coming from, and Olivier Ambog, who is Vice President for European Energy and Industry at Air Liquide and Chair of Business Europe's Energy and Climate Working Group. Hello, very nice to see you all. Okay, we're going to just dive straight in uh, to the discussion. Uh, and Dominique, perhaps if I could, could turn to you first uh, in terms of the energy union, where we are. Do you believe... Um, we heard some criticism this morning, uh, or some scepticism about the energy union. One panellist in our opening session saying, uh, sometimes the EU's say-do ratio, so what it says and what it actually does, uh, are a little low, and energy was an area he particularly highlighted. Do you think with these proposals, we're on track to deliver that secure, resilient, affordable energy system that we need? As you know, we have a lot of experience in Europe regarding scepticism. And uh, I think it is time uh, to go in, into another direction, as the President of the Parliament said just before. Uh, we had an European summit last week, extremely successful, with a full endorsement of our proposal regarding energy union. The energy union will be built based on commission proposal and with the full support of the European Parliament, because it is not only a priority for the European Commission. It is a priority for the European Parliament and for the Council at the top level, I mean, for all our leaders. And in the present situation, we have a lot of arguments. And we have a lot of arguments regarding all regulatory framework in order to facilitate investment, not to put additional obstacles, to facilitate investment, investment in generation, investment in transmission and transport, investment in storage, investment for demand for energy. And uh, we will need at least around 200 billion of euro per year of investment for the energy system. That's quite a sum, so we want to talk about how you're going to get that 200 billion, what will drive industry, because there are two sides of this coin. There is industry investing in it, uh, and there is industry benefiting from that affordable supply, secure supply that they so very much need. But Jesse Buzik, if I can just ask you in terms of where you think we are now, um, do you think we are on track with these proposals to deliver the energy system that we're going to need for the future? Uh, this has been the issue mentioned most today by panellists, as if we are to create, make Europe an attractive place to invest, energy is the top priority. Would you agree with that, and do you think we're on track? Well, certainly yes, I can answer very, very simply. Uh, because uh, mm, we treat it uh, as uh, something like discover now, that we've got something like energy union. But as a matter of fact, we built our energy union, which we called previously European Energy Community, since, since 2007 or 8. Why? because we had two crises, we forgot about them. 
because gas supply was stopped from Russia through Ukraine to European Union. And we had an enormous crisis eight years ago. We forgot completely about this issue. And now, step by step, we build something like such a union, energy market for, for energy. We, we just started not, not later than 2009, because it was a third energy package, absolutely fundamental from this point of view, proposed by European Commission, accepted fully by European uh, uh, Parliament, but there are a lot of problems with the member states to implement all of it. So if you ask me about European institutions and all the idea of European energy community or energy union, well, it is everything on the table, except for one thing, joint purchasing of gas, electricity, joint purchasing. It's not easy. I know, know very well, because five years ago, uh, ago, I declared the same with Jacques Delors, pre previous um, the President of the European Commission, I declared absolutely the same. Single market for energy as a political umbrella. Well, let us go. Uh, joint purchasing. Well, it was impossible to organize in the previous term in office. Maybe could be better than just now. But all the other pieces of legislation, everything on the table. So let us come back to our, our member states and to convince our governments to implement everything as quick as possible. We need both software and hardware. Software is our legislation, hardware, <laughs> uh, cross-border connections. Okay, so everything is on the table. What may or may not be uh, there is the political commitment. That's going to be the challenge, which raises the question, can we achieve an energy union with the current share out of those powers? But perhaps too big an issue for today. Um, but Torkel, if I could turn to you now, and, and from a company perspective, you're obviously coming from an industry, uh, a very in energy intensive industry. How do you see uh, the approach being developed by Europe, where we are now, uh, and do you feel encouraged by what you've heard uh, or do you think uh, that we're on the right track? Or, or do you still, as I think Stefan uh, Reimel indicated earlier with his say-do analogy, um, a little, rather a lot of skepticism about where we're going? Uh, so yes, we are a very heavy uh, energy user. And I would say, you know, I, I look back at the European project and I think the single market and everything has created is fantastic. But I would say that for us, as being a manufacturing um, company, the energy policy for Europe is the one that I would say has been the, my biggest disappointment. Um, and I recognize uh, Dominic has a f uh, what I think is a tremendous difficult job because it's, it's not, I think, just you know, the commission. Uh, it really is the member states where uh, the individual countries have gone in such different uh, directions where uh, some countries want to ban one form of energy and other country absolutely believes in it and, 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 and how to get you have one single policy for Europe, and with that, the belief for investors that we can predict the future, I think is probably the big, single biggest issue. And, and if I compare that to the United States where we are investing, we're building new plants, which we're not doing in Europe, uh, I think the optimist is just very different. Um, and I think that energy, if we can do something with the energy policy, we really have an opportunity to change how the optimist for industries in Europe. Could I just quickly follow up? You're not building, you're building in the US, you're not building here, and that's because of this is the central issue, or are there many factors? There are many factors with it, and we're building in Asia, we're building in South America, uh, but it, and it's, it's not only us, it's the whole optimist of industry. So we rely on a whole supply chain, and, if, and we all feed or uh, live on each other, and you know, we go where our customers are going. Okay. Uh, and of course, we don't see that happening in Europe. And, and, and I agree with you, it, we, we gotta break, break this, but I believe the energy policy is so central to it. I'll give you a chance to respond, but I want to hear, Olivier, are you as disappointed so far with the EU's track record in this area? Uh, do you think we're on the right track now? First of all, I think that it's difficult to say that we are on track. We asked, let's say, maybe sharing the principle of the Union on Energy. But for the time being, uh, we need to see what will happen because the history, I mean, uh, is giving us uh, some delusion. Uh, we start, I mean, to uh, have some uh, idea about the uh, liberalization of energy in 2000. We had worked a lot on that, 
but at the end, at least in 2013 and 2014, we had a lot of, let's say, uh, discrepancy between what we were expecting regarding the energy costs and regarding the security of supply. Uh, we should really uh, have in mind that even if we are more efficient, when we are, let's say, providing services of product, the first thing that our customers are asking us is how these services will bring me value, how I will be more competitive. And for the time being, for the energy intensive, this is key. And the, f the fact that the energy here in Europe is twice the price that we have in the US may have, let's say, the consequences that was said before. So we may have, let's say, an interest to invest in the US. We are still investing in uh, uh, Europe for having, let's say, the possibility to deploy new technology, but we need to have something which will be more competitive. And I'm positive. We are, let's say, at the first step of this uh, announcement. We are not on track. We are starting to be on track. So we, are, we have put ourselves in the right position. Now the question is, and, and I have to give you a chance, uh, Dominique, to, to respond, uh, and also Jersey, from a, from a political point of view, uh, and Jersey said everything's there, we just need the political commitment. I think a, a lot of disappointment, uh, and we know how hard it has been so far, the internal energy market has been a huge uphill struggle. Do you think we can achieve, you said the summit last week was very positive, you've got the parliament behind you, but that's the easy bit. Oh yes, nice plan. Do you think when it comes down to the nuts and bolts, this is an area where member states uh, guard their own powers very jealously, their right to decide. Do you think we can achieve an energy union uh, with the current sort of share out of responsibilities, if you like? Do we need deadlines to do it? Do we need something? Or is the urgency of the situation out there, Ukraine, etc., cetera, uh, concentrating minds enough? And that might make a big difference this time. I would say, first of all, we have now a clear agreement regarding clear priorities. This is valid when we are speaking about security, because the precondition, including for investment, is stability, certainty, but also security. And regarding uh, energy security, we have a clear agreement of all our leaders, as well as the parliament, to go in three directions in order to reduce the dependence vis-à-vis -vis the main supplier, uh, Russia. First of all, to organize better the LNG market, and we will present a strategy on that. As you know, presently we are importing a lot of LNG, more than 40 billion cubic metres a year, from essentially Qatar, Algeria, and Nigeria. And I am pleased that uh, we will import more from US, for example, in the near future, uh, we have a new uh, agreement between the first agreement between Lithuanian company and US for first import by the end of this year. Second priority for security, uh, the development of a gas hub in the south of Europe. Relaunching cooperation with all Mediterranean countries, including uh, Algeria, which is full of gas, conventional and non-conventional. And third, we will develop more rapidly the so-called Southern Corridor from the Caspian gas, having also the capacity to support the Iran negotiation because it is important to anticipate things. You see the energy panorama is not immobile. If the negotiation will finish positively, our companies, European companies, we have to anticipate and to come back to the Iranian market full of gas and oil. And this will require investment. Regarding internal energy market, we have done a lot, as you said, Jersey, already, but we will pay more attention to enforcement of recent legislation in all countries, the first package, having in mind two priorities, unbending rules and independence of regulators. But in addition, we will propose a new definition of market, a new market design. We will present new legislative proposals 
at the beginning of next year in order to take note of what is new in the market. What are the new needs? Five years ago, the European market was not the same we have now. We are confronted now to the need to manage the variability. Yeah. Because, as you know, five years ago, we had not 25% of electricity coming from renewables. There is a need to go from national capacity mechanism to more regional harmonized mechanism in order to ensure coordination of capacities. So okay, so the need is evident, Jersey Buzek. So your need is evident. Um, I mean, I, one figure that, that always strikes me incredibly is that the US will be self-sufficient in energy by, the, by 2035-ish. Uh, that is the prediction. Uh, we have the situation with the Ukraine. We have all these things that are driving the imperative to do this. So we have very good reasons. Do you believe this time that we will, that we can, that we can overcome? Uh, or do you think there has to be some rejigging of powers between member states and the, and, and the EU um, in order to get there? Do we need deadlines to do this? Are we, are we, you said we're probably at the start of the track. What's going to push us down that road? Or do you fear we might not go down it? Well, congratulations to the, mem to the United States. Uh, to be self-sufficient is very, very good for them and maybe for us because we should open our markets also for LNG trade between the United States and Europe is very important. But uh, going back to, to the European Union, saying that is everything on the table, it does not mean that there's nothing to do in front of European Commission, European Parliament, member states, first of all. I would like to inform you that in the European Council 2011, member states decided by themselves to finish internal energy market until the end of 2014. So let us be aware about uh, <laughs> everything what is necessary to fulfill. Well, we need, for example, transmission costs in our internal energy market. We need, for example, wholesale markets to open. We need a similar support schemes for the re renewables. If we would like to start with energy trade, we need the same support scheme. Otherwise, it is not free market because the competitiveness is not, is not fair. So a lot of things should be done. And European Commission knows about that very, very well. European Parliament as well, that we've got a lot of things to do. But in general, we agreed that it's absolutely necessary. We need also more transparency in our contacts abroad. Why? Because our position as a negotiator for the whole European Union is much stronger than we the, if we the, um, uh, negotiate separately. And so on, more money for research would be absolutely necessary. So we are in such a collision with the Juncker plan because some money should be taken for Juncker plan Horizon 2020. So it's not easy for my committee, you must admit. <laughs> so a lot of things to do. I certainly, we are on a good track for the last eight years. Okay. And now even stronger, we are much stronger in this good track. Can I just ask, just we haven't got long and I want to bring in another issue, which is we talked in the Better Regulation panel about coherence and consistency, uh, and we talked about coherence between the national and European level in some areas of legislation, but also in terms of policy in different areas. Now, the EU always puts these two things together now, energy and climate policy. Uh, I just wanted to ask, um, Torkel and Olivia, do you think that balance is now right? Uh, is there enough of an attention being paid to the competitiveness question uh, at the moment? And linked to that, um, because we don't have much time, so I'm trying to bundle things together, um, the question of what we do when there, if there is an international climate change agreement, mm. but if other countries do not step up to the plate and commit, as we have done, to the 40% reduction target, um, what do we do? So two questions there, really. Do we have the coherence, do you feel now, between uh, our energy and climate policy? And what do we do if the rest of the world doesn't follow suit? So if I would take it first, I'll give the second <laughs> to you. Uh, what, what I feel maybe um, as part of this, and I think the goals, goals are very, very important to have, and I think we put challenging goals out there, which are absolutely right. But what I miss in there is a balanced scorecard. And, and you know, for, for industry, we look at that if cut our capex, you know, investment in the plant, we're going to pay it, you know, later on, maybe let the maintenance costs go up. 
you need a balanced scorecard. When I see the same thing in, in terms of, of for us, energy, it's the cost. And, and I don't think that we talk about what kind of cost do we, do, do we predict we're going to have for energy going forward. And if we see that the cost for, you know, other, you know, like in the U.S., where it's, uh, you know, half the, the, the price, what do we want to have, you know, for Europe to be competitive? Do we want it to be 3x, you know, 4x? Or is there a target that we actually think it needs to be lower? Uh, and that's what I see missing in the, the balance scorecard as we put those targets out there. A comment to that, if you would, Olivia, and what you think we should do come <coughs> Paris if the rest of the world isn't following suit? First of all, I mean, uh, we hope that we will have a good, uh, let's say, exit in Paris. It is quite important because uh, we support the level playing field, and that is quite important because we will have the possibility at this same time, I mean, to follow the climate objective and the competitiveness and the energy policy. That is quite important for us. So taking into account that we will need that, but maybe we will not achieve that uh, in 2015. So we still need to have an holistic approach, and that is very good, and that is the key point that was brought by the European Commission. So climate and energy is the right balance. But saying that is not enough. Who will be the priority between, let's say, these for our industry within climate and energy? Competitiveness and cost competitiveness. So what is missing for the time being, and I think that we will have the possibility to discuss on, th on that, is the, a certain roadmap to be more competitive on energy. We have all the puzzle. Now we should assemble this puzzle, I mean, to really reach uh, uh, something which will be achievable. We are starting with uh, a price which is twice uh, higher than all competitors. I'm not, let's say, addressing the power price, which is another issue where we could see a lot of inconsistency in the regulation during the past year. So we should put that on track and we should have the possibility to be here by the, uh, let's say, European Commission. We should have to be, let's say, the possibility to bring a contribution. Obviously, we have in, uh, industry, we need competitiveness but we should have the possibility to, let's say, have in the law some real fact which will ensure competitiveness. Okay, very quick point to that, if you would, and then we haven't got long. I want to just see if there are any questions from the room. Yes, Please. on yeah. energy yeah. prices, yeah. I think it is important to note the present context. In June last year, the oil barrel was at $115. Today, we are not speaking about 10% of reduction or 20% of reduction. We are speaking about more than 50% of reduction. And as you know, this is impacting also to gas prices after three, six or nine months due to long-term contract. But this is creating for Europe a new opportunity because the consequence of that is to shift big amount of revenues from producers' countries to consumers' countries, having also a direct effect not only to the energy system, but to the whole economy. And all our economy in Europe will win around 1.5% plus of GDP, giving a new room for manoeuvre for competitiveness at a time our companies, and I would like to say that, are doing more and better for energy intensity in comparison with our competitor, including if you ask. Okay. Accordingly, we we'll see uh, with more optimism uh, the point of competitiveness in the following month. Big question there, will it last? Um, there are predictions that the oil price will come back up. So is there a danger there that Europe might say, to use your phrase from earlier, Emma, uh, okay, it's a window of opportunity, but that becomes, as you put it, a window of complacency where the pressure comes off to get the deal that's on the table agreed, question mark. Uh, we only have a few minutes, so I'm going to ask you to be really, really self-disciplined. Uh, one minute each, if you would, and then we're going to need to come back. Thank uh, you, sir. One question to Mr. Ristori. You talked a lot about gas and about oil, huh? but what about the uh, other energy sources that could make us more self-sufficient, like renewables and fossil fuels? Thank, thank you, you very much. And, yeah, thank you very much. Ingrid Reumert from the Relux Group. 
Uh, it seems sometimes that we have a, an imbalance, that we talk a lot about supply of energy and not so much about demand of energy. Um, so what are your thoughts around energy efficiency and how we secure a balance there and maybe uh, energy efficiency within the housing sector where we know that stands for around 40% of our energy consumption? Okay, so, and that one of the five dimensions of the energy union proposals, but how much emphasis do we put on it? Okay. Let's come back, very specific questions to you. So if you could pick those up, Dominique, and then we'll draw some conclusions. Thank you. First sir. point regarding security, diversification is key. And diversification is important, not only in terms of new route of origin of gas, oil, but also regarding the use of different sources of energy. As you know, in Europe, we have a very well balanced energy mix, incorporating all aspects gas, uh, oil, uh, nuclear, renewables, and we should have the best use possible of all reserves. And this is valid diversification when we are also speaking between the balance with moderation of demand. This energy efficiency first will be developed. And uh, in particular, this is crystal clear in uh, Energy Union, uh, we will consider energy efficiency at the same level of any source of energy in terms of primary okay. consideration with three priorities because we should focus on clear priorities. First, building, because building are representing 40% yeah. of energy consumption, and in that context, heating and cooling, representing 80% of the 40s. And we will have a lot of investment in that regard because of the positive effect and rapid effect on economic growth and job. Second, transport, clean transport. Time is mature for pushing for electromobility and clean urban transport. And third, efficient product. Thank you. Um, just a quick word, uh, Jesse Buzik, if you would, on this question of energy efficiency, and then we'll try to draw some conclusions and some priorities for the future. Um, but in terms of the weight you give to the different legs of the energy union, um, as we know, energy efficiency, one of the dimensions, the five dimensions, how important do you think that is, and do you think there is enough emphasis on it uh, in the current proposals? Well, it's quite obviously energy efficiency is uh, maybe even beginning of of everything what we should start to, to discuss on energy issue, uh, because the, it's certainly the cheapest energy resource, because the cheapest energy is uh, what we not necessarily to produce and to use. And also in all our programs in research as well, in structural funds, we should remember about that, as energy efficiency as a, as a first point quite visible. There is no political discussion about this point. We can say that all the energy resources has got uh, its own weaknesses. Renewables as well. First genera uh, generations of, uh, of um, well, uh, mm, produced biofuels. They were not quite clear if it was a good idea to produce ethanol in, in, in Brazil and with great deforestation. We've got also some problem with disposal of solar panels. We should think about that. In, and uh, of course, the nuclear safety in this case is a big danger for us. The same with fossil fuels. So we should just keep a, a, a right balance and indigenous energy resources, because we didn't mention about renewables, is indigenous energy resource. Renewables is present wind, solar in each member state. So saying about fossil fuels, it could be indigenous energy resource. Let us remember about renewables, of course. And efficiency is, of course, before everything, the okay. most important. Okay. Ah, well, that probably answers my last question. But Olivier, uh, if I could start with you, and in terms of priorities for the future. Uh, we have heard about this and, and a lot of welcome for the holistic approach to tackling this issue that there is no one silver bullet. So I accept that my question is probably unfair. Uh, but nevertheless, um, I'm going to ask it anyway because I'm going to play the politician and I'm going to say, okay, one thing you want me to do, uh, one thing you want uh, the EU to do in terms of the energy union, if we can't tackle all of these things at once and 
we have to get member states behind something, so we need to invest our political capital carefully. What would your priority be to ensure that European industry has an affordable supply, a secure supply of energy, and how that will feed into making it an attractive place to invest? First, sustainable competitiveness. That is quite important, and we have a short-term decision regarding all the ETS post-2020. We did not speak about that, but we need to have a clear, let's say, clarification of the European Commission regarding what will be the uh, carbon leakage measure, what will be the cost, additional cost that we will have to support. We want to be, let's say, uh, considered as uh, having the f uh, co a coverage of 100 person if we are the best performer. So we want to be challenged, not on something which is, which is theory, but we could bring, let's say, something which is very practical. The benchmark is a good way to, let's say, challenge industry. So we will work on that, but we don't want to have additional costs on that. So the first thing is, second thing, which is a long-term mechanism, we need really to implement this roadmap about the competitiveness. So we need to have the possibility to get the uh, country more coordinated because Europe can do something, but if the country are not working aligned with Europe, we will have a great issue. And we have done a lot of, because we have one of the most integrated uh, na nitrogen, let's say nitrogen, uh, natural gas system, we should Remember that we have a lot of good assets and we should invest on that. Thank so you very much. Tolko, your priority. For me, it would be balance. Uh, I think both in terms of the balance you know, measurements that we got to also continue to look at cost and look at cost competitiveness of energy. The second one, I think Dominic mentioned it in terms of the balance of fuel sources, because I think it, you know, we, all, we all know it's very difficult to predict the future. And I think it's dangerous to say that the future lies in this energy direction when we know, you know things change. I believe nuclear probably will come back at some time. Um, we're a lot of improvements being made on safety uh, on nuclear. Uh, I think the same thing on fracking. Uh, I think that there, you know, we should be working on how to make fracking safe in Europe and not just dismiss it. Uh, I think this diversification is very important. Thank you very much. Yes, your priority. Well, um, completion of energy market, because it is helpful for everything we're talking about. Strong position uh, in front of our external partners, uh, security of supply because we can help each other. We can also have an energy trade and renewable to use solar in the south and wind in the in the north and so on so on and to, to build really something which we should say competition between uh, energy c companies energy industry energy sector on the big market ma market and we as a consumers on the big competitive market will have a lower prices if we want to compare ourselves with the United States in the TTIP negotiations at the end, we should have lower energy prices. We could achieve it thanks to internal energy market, nothing else. And thank you for making a beautiful link to our next panel, which will be on trade and where I'm sure we were talking a great deal about TTIP. Dominic, you have the last word, your top priority among all the things you have highlighted. First of all, security, because without security, no investment. And in case of uh, disruption of supply, the first affected will be companies and entrepreneurs. Second, of course, competitiveness and internal market. This is crucial. And third, all aspects around sustainability, moderation of demand, because this will open also new routes for investment, in particular in the context of eco-industries. Ladies and gentlemen, will you join me in thanking our panel very much indeed. Thank you so much to all of you. We're going to take a 30-minute break, 25 minutes in fact, because we started that session a little bit late, so I stole five minutes from your coffee. 25-minute break and then back here for our discussions on trade and then on the EU investment plan. 
Coffee served outside.